Five years ago, we will build maybe five houses a year. Now we're able to build 25, 30 houses a year. And the need is so much bigger than that, that we built one house and on Monday, we have other families, at least 10 more families asking us, can you help us? Welcome to Professional Builders Secrets, the podcast for building company owners wanting to grow safely and securely. I'm your host, Will Blunt, and today I'm joined by Sven and Betty from the 141 Project. Betty, Sven, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. I'm really excited to have you both on today. Um, we're in a unique position where we're in three different parts of the world in three different time zones, um, but it's an absolute privilege uh, to have you both join me today because the One for One Project is doing some amazing work. Um, it's a, just for anyone out there who doesn't know what the One for One is, Sven will probably do a better way of um, explaining what it is to everyone. But my understanding of it is it's an organization that builds houses for families in need around the world. Um, so some some fantastic work going on. But Sven, do you want to kickstart the show by giving us a backstory on, on the One for One Project? Yeah, absolutely. would love to. Um, so the One for One Project uh, partners with Breaking Cycles, which is Betty's organization in, uh, in Guatemala, outside of Guatemala City in a, in a suburb called Simpongo. Um, and uh, we strive to build homes for families in need. Uh, and we do that on behalf of builders in the United States and in Australia now uh, that, uh, that make a donation on behalf of their clients as a move-in gift or, or just as a thank you gift for clients. Uh, when they complete their homes, um, the homes that we build are uh, are relatively simple, but it's it's uh, almost unattainable for the families that we're that we're donating them to, uh, if not for the donations and for the work that Betty is doing um, through uh, through breaking cycles and one for one. Yeah, great. So um, for anyone out there who is a an association of professional builders member, um, we've started to donate all renew $100 USD for anyone that renews their membership to the 141 project, which contributes to building, you know, new homes in, in Guatemala at the moment. Um, so it's a great, great cause and I'm really excited to be a part of that. But Betty, uh, how did you get involved? Well, <laughs> I am I am from Guatemala and uh, I was born in a very poor family. And I, the first years of my life, I also lived in a, in one room. So when we said a house is one room, and that is how I grew up. Those were the first years of my life. After the big earthquake in Guatemala that uh, in 1976, the government donated the rights to have a two-bedroom house. And my family was uh, applied and got one. And that meant the before and after for my family to have a safe place with uh, a, that we could call home, a, that it was ours. And that is part of my heart in how, why to help people because I understand the need. I was there and, and I know that my people just need a little bit of help to, to feel that they can do it. Yeah, that's a really, a really powerful story. So what kind of impact are you seeing the the one for one project and and the work you're doing with breaking cycles having on the locals in Guatemala? Well, you when you think of poverty, you really don't know how, what poverty is in Guatemala. So you have a a family living in rooms made of bamboo, and today it just rained here. It poured. And for those families, the water is going to go through their rooms. And that is the one room that they, where they sleep, where they eat, where they cook. And tonight, if they sleep on the floor, they're going to sleep in a wet floor, in a wet dirt floor. And all of their clothes got wet. Everything is wet right now there. So for them to have a cinder block room, with a cement uh, floor and a roof that really covers them from from rain, it makes it makes a life changing um, impact. Yeah, I think it's really important to to educate um, 
you know, people that live in North America, Australia and, and other parts of the world about, you know, that the reality of that um, because it, it would be easy to not fully understand that. Uh, so the, the houses that are being built, can you explain exactly what they, like how different they are from what they're living in at the moment? Uh, a lot of people live in rooms, as I said, made of bamboo sticks. Other people, they make rooms out of thin uh, metal sheets and um, <laughs> some other people with plastic. They finish covering that with plastic and uh, dirt floor. And it is, just, uh, it is just one room and that is their home. Uh, they don't own a table and chairs. Uh, they it's just beds and probably probably chairs that that they can sit on. And after the the dream is that we through breaking cycles can donate three rooms to each family, so they could have in one room like a bedroom for the parents, one room bedroom for the children. And one other room can be their all social, uh, like kitchen, dining room, and living room, and and where they where the kids can do homework. Because right now, what they have is no place to do homework, no place to even put their books, and that is why we we dream about giving, helping them to have three rooms per family, and we have helped a lot of families, but there's so much need that every time we build for a family, the next, to, tomorrow, we're going to bless uh, the house number 200 that we have been able to build thanks to to people like you and thanks to the One for One project. Uh, five years ago, we will build maybe five houses a year. Now we're able to build 25, 30 houses a year and the need is so much bigger than that, that we built one house and on Monday we have other families, at least 10 more families asking us, can you help us? Uh, you mentioned that the um, the need for the house is, is, is so much greater than, than what you can do at the moment, but you are, you know, working towards building more houses. How, how like far spread are these issues in Guatemala? How many people are living in those one room bamboo houses that you mentioned well 70 70 of people in guatemala live in poverty and over 50 percent of people live in extreme poverty and that is a uh, to say half of the guatemala population live in extreme poverty uh, we are we are a country that we have uh, the mayan people lived in guatemala uh, over 25 different languages is spoken in Guatemala, and that divides that divides the groups and limits the opportunities they have if they don't speak the official language. It limits uh, the roads, everything that because we are not a modern country. Always the poor people are the ones that are lived behind the most. Of course, of course. Sven, I want to bring you into the conversation here um, to understand a bit more about the process of, of, I guess, from dollar through to, to home build. What, like, what does that look like for the one, one for one project? If a builder does donate or, or the APB or someone else donates $1 to your organization, what's the full process there? Yeah. And I love that question because we're really proud of the process and we're, we're proud of how much of the, uh, the money goes towards building the homes. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's 100%. Uh, 100% of the money that's donated to One for One flows through directly to uh, to breaking cycles and organizations like Breaking Cycles to build homes. Um, we, uh, a number of builders locally here in Minnesota, cover the overhead expenses of of running the nonprofit so that uh, so that so that we can make it happen that way. And and really, the the process is that uh, as we as we fundraise, uh, we work with Betty, uh, and on her end, she. Um, and some other local folks she works with help to identify the families in need. They, I, they determine if the land that they wish to build on is owned by the family. They have a, a lawyer that they work with. There's a local pastor and a social worker that will work with the family to determine if they're truly 
a family that, that it is deserving of this donation. And then uh, something that I think is great that Betty does on her end is that the family is required both to make a donation, a financial donation towards the construction of their home, and also be a part of the process of building the home. Betty's organization will, will help to hire masons to get the, the, the majority of the work done. But when those masons are on site doing the work, uh, the family has to participate. And so they, they have some skin in the game. Um, it's not just a handout and, uh, uh, and a free home. It's something that they, they feel like they've really earned as well and that they're contributing towards. It's really a beautiful process. Uh, to, yeah. to, you know, I, I, I think I've lost track. I think Betty has as well. Uh, in terms of how many homes I've personally built uh, working with the Masons down there. But the families that work alongside of us and the pride that they take and the, the little touches and the fixes that they do to the work that we're all doing to make it literally to put their fingerprints on, on their new home is, is, uh, is striking. And uh, it's, it's just such a, a beautiful thing to be a part of, to, to help deliver that home to these families and, and to get to know them for the the few days that we're a part of building it uh, to get to know them through the process of building their new home. I love that. Yeah. You, you get the, the, the new homeowners involved in the process. What, what was the decision behind that? And maybe Betty, this, this is one you can uh, talk to as well. Yeah. I think that's a great question for Betty. Yeah. Uh, go so for it. I, I was uh, telling you at the beginning, we were uh, given the right to have, to own a house with my family, but the government just gave, the right and then my father and my mom had to make monthly payments for that house and that made made us have ownership you know like it was not something that we were just given but it made my father very proud that we were making the the payments for that and i think that that is part of why we decide to make the the people also part of that, or because we're not just giving the house, but we're giving back dignity to them. And they have ownership, but they have pride in that. The house, to build a house, is a, a $3,000. It's what each room costs. And the families give 400 and the one for one gives the rest. And... What we have seen is people getting very proud and happy to be part of this and encouraged to continue doing this. So it's like it's a, an impact beyond just the, the shelter itself. It's, it's more of a psychological journey, I guess. <laughs> yes, 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 it is. And then just how they feel. First, can you imagine being a father that goes to work in the fields and makes about ten dollars a day, and you need three thousand to build a room, and you just make ten dollars a day, and it is kind of a uh, hopeless. That and then because it is it is so far, you don't even try. But there is an organization that can help you if you just get these four hundred dollars, and that will give the the house for the that they need for their family, but also the fact that there's 200 people in the waiting list and they were chosen to get the house that week. That makes them feel more unique, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's, it seems so much more achievable, that $400, as you said, compared to the $3,000. Um, and it, it's something they can work towards, I guess. But if there's 200 people on the waiting list, how, how do you choose who gets to get the next house? <laughs> that is the hard work. <laughs> and that is the work that the social workers do because I cannot do that. Uh, but the social workers go and see the, see the house, see the need, how many children they have, if they have a special need child, uh, that put them on on top of the list. If they have somebody that is sick and like respiratory problems, that puts them on on top of the list. But then there's just the waiting list and as they come and they and they are checked and 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 they have all the, the requirements, then they'll go next. Well I mean hopefully 
that list can start to get moved through more as, as more money is raised through um, the one for one project. Hopefully. That, yeah. is, that is not only my hope. It is so fun that when we go and bless the house at the end, we, we build the house in one week. And at the end of the week, we, we ask God to bless the house and give it to the, to the family. And it is amazing how many families ask, thank God, and ask, I hope that other people can be blessed with this. That's very powerful. Sven, you've, you've actually been hands-on and, and seen this process from start to finish in Guatemala, I believe. Um, what kind of impact did that have on you? Uh, well, it, it was really a, a turning point in my life. Uh, the first time that I, I built a home in Guatemala, um, I, I, I think it was probably 22, 25 years ago um, that I, I decided to go on a trip with my, my church at the time and, uh, and built a home for a family. Um, met my wife on that trip, uh, met some, some very good friends, met some relatives of Betty that, uh, that, that led us to the relationship that we now have with Betty. Um, so it was really instrumental in, in, in forming what we have today. But what was so striking to me was in building the, that first house and setting those blocks and the, the simplicity of the structure that we were building. It, it, you know, these homes that we're building by American or Western standards um, aren't much, uh, you know, a, a 12 by 15 cinder block structure and the, the level of appreciation and the joy and the happiness that you see on the, on the faces of the family that you're building this for, and even their neighbors, um, it's, it's striking. And it is, uh, it's such a contrast to what we see in, in the business of building homes in the United States, uh, with the, the difficulties that we face and the, the everyday challenges of of uh, trying to achieve perfection in the uh, in the mansions that we're building, um, and uh, and and you know, oftentimes I think that lack of appreciation, and so that's really what inspired uh, the 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 donation of homes in Guatemala, which led to the one for one project. Was um, you know, even in the toughest of projects in the U.S., if it results in a family in Guatemala and other places in the world that at some point down the road here, receiving a home that they otherwise would never have, uh, that maybe offsets some of that, the difficulty and the challenges of the work that we do day to day, and it makes it all worthwhile. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's kind of how it all came about. Yeah, I guess it puts things in um, perspective when you're building a home in America compared to the impact it can have on on a family um, in in an underprivileged society, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's it's an impact that that no matter how well we do in the United States and building the homes that we do, uh, we can't impact a family um, in the U.S. or you know in, in Australia in the way that we can in Guatemala um, with so little. Um, you know, I often relate it to the the the, the cost of building a home in, in Guatemala um, is is uh, is many times less than the cost of a refrigerator in many of the homes that we build. Um, and so, just you know, that perspective. Uh, it's so little, but it makes such a huge impact. And and uh, having that power is uh, that power to change lives is is uh, it's meaningful, um, and it, it's what keeps us doing this. Yeah, it's a quite amazing. And and as you said, it's only a relatively in small sacrifice for you know. For example, I think you um, replace the the thank you gift to after building a home with you know building a new home in Guatemala it's such a huge like they, they seem so different in um, perception but it can have such an enormous impact yeah I think we talked about that on a previous call um, the, you know we we at, at my construction companies do this is that that move-in gift uh, it mm. replaced some other things that that in hindsight were pretty pretty uh, trivial. Uh, you know, mm. they, they, you know, maybe a very nice bottle of wine, but uh, but nothing in terms of the impact that uh, that a donation to to a family in need uh, makes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Betty. I'm interested to hear if you have you know a story of a family that you've worked with maybe recently, or one that you can think of um, where they've gone through this process and it just really stood out to you. Wow. <laughs> So many, too, too many stories. So many stories. <laughs> um, but I think that there are a couple of families that have been uh, affected positive by by this project. 
And it's not the family that had received the house, but it's the family of the Masons that work making this possible. So we have one Mason that is in charge of the subcontract uh, the, to hire other Masons. But he's a father, he is a brother, he is somebody that is changing the path of the family. A lot of people here, a lot of Masons, when they don't find a job for two or three weeks in a row, they start thinking of leaving Guatemala and going overseas to find a job in in the States and leaving their families behind, trying to seek for a dream that will not will not <laughs> will not happen. But by having this project going on and we have this group of Masons that they know that they will have a job with us. And not only that, but he hired other people. He hired his sister, who is a Mason as well. And that is breaking uh, the thoughts that women, because here in Guatemala, there's a lot of macho culture where only men are able to do this and not women. And I have seen a whole family changing their path. And instead of trying to go somewhere else to know that they can have a better life here in Guatemala, thanks to this project. Yeah, that's amazing. So it's like keeping the family together and giving them hope. See? Yep. And one of the things I'll also add is, um, you know, that the house is just a part of what Betty does. Um, and a lot of times it's kind of the uh, the, the beginning of, of her relationship and her organization's relationship with the family. Um, and that extends into education. And um, and and some healthcare and uh, and and uh, conversations about faith and so it's it's uh, it's foundational, uh, no pun intended, um, but it leads <laughs> to so many better things and it leads to truly breaking the cycle of poverty with a family because the the parents don't have to 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 work for for never ending for the goal of building a home that they may never be able to afford. Uh, they've got that, and then they can start making different choices about. Uh, are their children going to work in the market or in the field so that they can support the family? Um, now maybe they don't have to. Uh, now maybe the children can stay in in school and they can they can. It really is a fork in the road for that family um, to to change the trajectory of of those kids' lives. Yeah, I think you mentioned Sven in a in a previous call we had. It's like it's the start of the conversation. It, gi- it gives you that that door into the conversation about all of these more entrenched issues that the the families are facing. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And Betty, maybe you can speak to that a little bit about, you know, just quickly where where it goes from there after after you begin that relationship with the families. Yes, uh, I am a teacher by heart and by profession. <laughs> I love to teach and I know uh, as I said I come from a from a family that had little and little little education, little money, but my mom had a heart and she was wise in saying, you're not going to quit school. You're going to finish school. No matter what, you're going to finish school. And that changed my whole path also. And I believe that education is the key. Education, sending their kids to school is the key. But I understand that in so many, in so many cases, it's just not possible. It involves a lot of it involves transportation, money, and and even well, they go to they go to school. Parents may say, "Okay, you can go to school," but then when the kids come back from school, they need help uh, doing their homework. But the parents never went to school, so they don't know how to read and write. So they have no idea how to help, and they cannot help. So by having these conversations with them and letting them know there is a place that you can send their kids and they're going to get the help that they need, it opens up. It opens up dreams and opportunities. And it's just everything we do, it's an excuse to share our faith and the possibilities of growing in Guatemala. Well, thanks so much for sharing that, Betty. I, I, the work you're doing is is absolutely amazing um, in Guatemala and Sven, obviously, 
you've had a, an enormous impact on um you know the the people on the ground in guatemala and their lives um so it's a it's a really powerful story and i'm you know really proud that the apb is involved um to, to help build those houses i guess sven or, or betty um what would you say to the builders out there? I mean, obviously, if they're a member of APB, they're automatically contributing to the one for one project. But for anyone else out there that you think um, would would like to contribute to the organization, what would you say to them? Uh, we'd love to talk to them. Um, you know, I, I I can think of no better um, opportunity to to change lives. Um, it's uh, it's it's near and dear to our hearts as builders. Um, you know, I, it, really everyone that's a part of the one for one project is in some way involved in, in real estate or building or architecture. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're giving, we're giving, uh, kind of the, the fruits of our labor to say, uh, to, to families that otherwise wouldn't have, uh, the product that we, that we build. Um, so we'd love to have the conversation. We'd love to have builders come alongside us. Um, we try to head to Guatemala once a year, uh, to, to put our hands on and, and build the homes ourselves. And, and we'd love to have builders join us if ever there's uh, an interest in that as well. Um, so yeah, it, you know, just, it's an open, it's an open door to have that conversation. It could be a, a life changing experience. It certainly was for you, Sven. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, it's, it, it's, it's something that uh, was a really a, a moment, uh, kind of a momentary decision, just kind of, I'm in, I'll go. Um, and it really did uh, change my life in so many ways. Mm. Would you like to add anything, Betty, to that? Well, to to the people that have been, like the members that had already been involved in donating, I just want to say thank you. I want to thank each of them because what they're giving towards it is changing. It is changing lives. It is a. It's not just a gift that goes away. It is a security, love. Uh, if keeping families together, it is a life-changing uh, gift. And I want to thank each of you in behalf of the, the people, the children, the families that have been receiving these houses. Thank you. And if somebody else is there, I I can talk for hours, but it's not the same as they, like, if they come and see and have a hands-on uh, experience. So... Welcome to Guatemala anytime. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Sven and Betty. I've learned a lot about more about Guatemala and the, and the impact you're both having on on people's lives there. So I really appreciate you taking some time to come on and talk about that. Uh, for anyone that wants to learn more about the One Four One project, they can go to the One Four One dot org, and I'll include a link to that in the show notes. Um, there's lots of great information on the website there about um, the stories of the families that that are building the you're building the houses for, uh, and just generally where all the the money um, that is being donated to the to the organisation is is going. So, uh, an amazing impact you're having, and I really appreciate you guys for for coming on the show today. Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure. Also, a big thank you to our listeners, wherever you are in the world having a listen today. If you are feeling generous, please uh, check out the 141 Project and um, be generous. If you like the show, please subscribe. And if you're feeling generous, leave us a review. But until next time, have a great day and we look forward to seeing you again. 